Well, good morning and welcome once again to the Morning Meditation with God radio ministry brought to you each morning at this same time by the generous and loving members and friends of the Midwest Church of Christ. The Midwest Church of Christ is located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky, and we'd like to extend to you and to your entire Again, located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky. Our order of services include each Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. is our first worship of the day. Then at uh, 9.30, we have our Sunday Bible School. And at 10.30, we have our second worship of the day. On Wednesdays, we have our midweek Bible study, prayer and devotional services. Our first session is at uh, 10 a.m. in the morning, and our evening session is at 6.50. That's 10 minutes before 7. If you would like to study the Bible in the comforts of your own home, we have two ways that you can do that. One is the Bible correspondence course that you can take by mail. The second is the personal home study where someone will come, sit down, study the Word of God right in the comfort of your own home. Either way, you give us a call at 774-3986 and we'll register you today. In other announcements... Coming up um, this uh, uh, Saturday is our CLIP ministry, our Christian Life Improvement Plan uh, ministry. And um, we hope that you will be with us uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, this is our financial literacy ministry. Brother Robert Fry a financial um, analyst, and a Dave Ramsey certified instructor is our uh, instructor, and we hope, trust, and pray that you will come out. This week, this month's uh, uh, session is uh, credit cards. Do we need plastic surgery? Come out and be with us on Sunday, on Saturday at 10 a.m. Also, uh, coming up this uh, Sunday uh, at at, our, at 9.30 a.m. is our Parenting, Strengthening Parenting uh, Roundtable. We will be, just, we will be setting the, the program uh, agenda for the uh, uh, program uh, on uh, July. Uh, so we hope that you will make plans to uh, be with us uh, uh, this coming Sunday. All parents, parents of school age children, we want you to be uh, with us. Praise be um, unto God. So we're looking forward to it. Also, next week begins Vacation Bible School. Praise be unto God. Vacation Bible School. And we want you to make plans to be at Vacation Bible School um, this year. And we're, uh, it will be Monday, Monday uh, um, June the 18th and run through uh, Thursday, June the 21st. And uh, so we want you to know that we will only be running our VBS Monday through Thursday. And then on uh, Saturday, on Saturday the 
23rd will be our annual church picnic. And uh, uh, from 10 a.m. until 3. And on that same day, there will be a clothing and household items giveaway. Uh, the 23rd from 10 until uh, 3. That ministry is... Um, um, coordinated by the uh, Midwest um, Women's uh, Ministry. So God bless you, and we hope that um, we hope that you will um, be uh, bringing in those um, uh, items for the giveaway. There'll be a door knocking campaign going on this coming uh, Thursday evening at 6 p.m. from 6 to 7.30, and we'd like for you to join with us and make sure that you bring all of your young people uh, to be with us, to go into the neighborhoods and um, inviting young people to uh, VBS. The fifth annual Education Freedom Prayer Breakfast will be Tuesday, July the 10th um, from 8 to 9.30. This year, speaker is the Honorable Derek Ramsey, Secretary of Education and Workforce Development Cabinet of Kentucky. Our theme this year is Strengthening the Basics preparing youth for the 21st century workplace. And we hope that you'll make plans on attending. This is a great time to uh, um, see what our children are doing in our summer day camp uh, and our after-school ministry. We want you to come and be with us and support what we do here at the Midwest Church of Christ in our Village Learning and Development Center. We are making a difference in the life of children. Uh, we, we are working with them in their basic skills of reading, math, writing, and we've added memorization uh, to the um, uh, uh, array of services uh, that we provide the children. So God bless you. We look forward to you coming uh, to the, we asked you for a donation of $75 for you to come and be with us. So we hope that you will do that. Praise be unto God. In the area-wide news, in the area-wide news, the 36th and Garland Church of Christ is having their annual uh, church anniversary, uh, 57th church anniversary. And that will be uh, June the 24th through the 27th. And we hope that you will come and uh, be with us. Praise be, uh, uh, be with them. Brother uh, James Hamilton of Dallas, Texas will be doing the preaching and we hope that you'll come and uh, get to know him and uh, uh, support the gospel meeting. Now let's remember our sick and shut in. Want to remember Sister Bertha Frazier. Uh, Sister Don Marie Sizemore, Sister Melanie Stokes, Sister Mary Wood, uh, Brother Angelo uh, Pendergrast, uh, uh, Brother David Wilson. Also pray for Sister May, our shut-ins, Sister Mamie Cartwright, Sister uh, Louise Covington, Sister Sarah Cowan, Sister Mary Hunter, Sister Pearl Smith, Sister Betty Standard, Sister Vivian Wakefield, and uh, Brother James Frazier. Pray for those going through the dialysis and 
other treatments. I want to pray for our, our good friends, Sister Jessie Bennett, uh, Sister Darlene Hayes, Sister Angela Walls Gill, Sister Sheila Heiner, uh, and Sister Sandy Hammond Schuler there in Evansville. And also pray for Brothers Jasper Crenshaw, Brother Dennis Reynolds, Brother Richard Rose, Brother Gary King, Brother Dennis uh, Reynolds, and um, and uh, my oldest brother, Marvin Stevenson, Jr. We also want to give thanks to those who supported the radio ministry this week. want to say thank you to Sister Deborah Abernathy, Sister Linda Bird, Brother Alvester Curry, Brother Richard Curry, uh, Brother Tony, and uh, Sister Chiquita Curry. Um, Sister Tiana Curry, Sister Clarice Floyd Johnson, Brother James Malone, uh, Brother Johnny and Sister Dorothy Miles, Sister Cynthia Purvis, Sister Amanda Smith, Sister Angelica Robertson, Brother Clark Stannard, uh, Sister Joey Stevenson, Brother Kevin Stevenson, Brother Stephen Terrell, Sister Elaine Watts, Sister Marilyn Wester, and our dear friends, Brother David and Sister Rita Kamisha. Thank you. Thank you so much for your generosity and your kindness towards this radio and, and uh, Facebook Live ministry. Praise be unto God. Uh, Want to also uh, give a shout out to Brother James Fowler. His birthday was on yesterday. And Sister Rosemary uh, Thompson birthday will be this coming Sunday. Praise be unto God. Now, let's go to our God in prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you so very much. Thank you for the great love that you have shown us, a love so great that it's humanly uncomprehensible. But, oh, Lord, we thank you for it, and we praise you, and we give you thanks most of all for Jesus, the precious Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the whole world. I praise him, and I petition you in behalf of our sick and our shut-in, those going through treatments. I pray for them. O oh Lord, our God, please give us this day our daily bread and help us to be thankful for what you have done and what you continue to do. O oh Lord, our God, I pray now that you will be with every home, every individual, every family, every workplace, automobile that's listening to the morning meditation with God. O oh Lord, our God, Please be with us and, and search us, O oh God, for where you know more what we need than we know to ask of you. And so we praise, praise your name in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now let's open up our Bibles. Let's open up our Bibles to the book of Psalms, the first division. The book of Psalms, the first division. Uh, 
The Bible, the word of God says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and it's in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Jesus come to show us how to live in this new kingdom of God. Matthew records him teaching his disciples in the mountain. In Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse 3, the Bible, the word of God says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. Rejoice, he says, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Now let's open up our Bibles to the book of Matthew, the 15th chapter, and the verse is 18. The word of the Lord says, But what comes out of the mouth comes from the heart, and this defiles a man. Wednesday, June the 13th, 2018, our daily devotion entitled, What Comes Out of the mouth, what comes out of the mouth. The Bible teaches and stress that what you say is an accurate indi indicator of what is in your heart. If your words bless and encourage others, they give evidence of a compassionate heart. If you often share good news about Christ, you demonstrate a heart that is grateful for your own salvation. What others are in when others are in a crisis, 
do they know they will find peace and comfort in your words? Do you frequently and spontaneously offer other offer prayers for others? Do your words and the manner in which you say them reveal a patient heart? All of these behaviors indicate a heart that is like the heart of the Father. Or do you often regret your words? Are, the, are there people even now who are hurt, are angry because of something you have said? Do you enjoy gossiping? Do you tend to criticize others? Do you feel that you are not to, the, responsible for what comes out of your mouth when you are angry? Does your mouth spew grumbling complaints? These behaviors come from a heart that is unlike God's heart. You may say, oh, but that's just the way I am. I'm always saying the wrong thing. Yet scripture clearly states that an, an abusive tongue is not under the control of the Spirit. James chapter 3 and verse 3 through 10. A sanctified mouth is a wonderful instrument for the Lord. A heart like the Father's heart will produce only pure and loving works without making any excuses for your words, ask the Holy Ghost to forgive you for any words that have brought harm. And then ask him to, dis to discipline your mouth so that every word, every word you speak is used by God to encourage and edify others. And so is the readings from the books of the Lord. The book of Psalms, the first division. The book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 through 12. And here in the book of Matthew chapter 15, and the verse is 18. Now let's open up our Bibles to our feature study found in the book of Colossians, the second chapter. The book of Colossians, the second chapter. And we're going to be here this morning at verses 11 and 12. The word of the Lord says, In whom also... Ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. A false religion is any religion 
not based upon God's love and the Lord Jesus Christ. For God has so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 is still one of the most powerful scripture in all of the world. Praise be unto God. I need to take this. Hello. Hello. Well, I just got a, I was just getting a message in that Angelo is taking a turn for the worse. And I just wanted to let you all know that, uh, that uh, he is taking a turn for um, uh, uh, the, the worse. And uh, Brittany is, is uh, uh, Brittany, we, we are, we're so uh, sorry for it, baby. And uh, we, we want you to know that you've got your church family and you've got your uh, um, Facebook Live and your uh, uh, morning meditation on WLLV radio. Everybody's praying for you, baby girl. And uh, we want you to know that. Um, uh, and uh, I got the message that uh, Angelo is not is not doing, has taken a turn for the worse and uh, you just can know that we'll we'll continue to pray for him and we'll be up there to see him um, uh, this morning. I need you to let the let them let the uh, nurses station know that I'll be up there. Okay, God bless you, baby. Praise be unto God. Uh, in fact, let's just stop and let's have prayer. Let's pray. Let's pray for Angelo, dear God and Father in heaven. As we come this morning again, we ask, O oh God, that you would go to the hospital. Go there and visit with Angelo Pendergraft. You know his name, but we wanted to call it before you. And I pray, O oh God, that you will give him uh, a power of healing, uh, O oh God. And I especially pray uh, that you'll be with those doctors and nurses and may May they provide your healing. And I pray for his dear wife, and, and I pray for her, and I pray for the child. I pray for the child that is in her womb. Uh, and, and I ask for your grace to be with him. So, oh God, be with this child, and be with Brittany, and may you keep them is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. In the book of um, in the book of uh, 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 Brittany is saying that he is stable now, so keep keep him in prayer. Praise God. Common sense tells us that if God loved the world so much that He gave His only Son for the salvation of all of us who were Amen who were sinners. <laughs> in fact, the, the, the Apostle Paul declared in the book of Romans, the fifth chapter and the eighth verse, but says that God commanded his love toward us, that in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When we were ungodly, when we were crooks, amen, robbers, thieves, fornicators, whoremongers, effeminate, all of the homosexuals and all of that. When, we, when man was all of that, God died for the ungodly. God died for everyone 
The drunkard, did you know God died for you too? The drug addict, did you not know that God uh, died for you? I come to tell you God died for all of us. Yes, liar, he died for the liars too. Oh, the deceivers, he died for you too. Yes, God died for all of us. Now, if he sent his son to die for us, it wouldn't make sense for him to be off into a far land and not concerned about us. But I come to tell you, that's why he says in verse number 10 in Colossians 2, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Let me tell you something. When it talks about him being the head over all principality and powers, I'm glad, y'all. I am so glad. You know why? Because the principalities and the powers, that's where Satan dwells. Satan dwells in those, in those places. Listen, listen to the testimony of the scripture in the book of um, Ephesians chapter 2. He says, and you, and I'm in verse 1, in Ephesians 2, write it down. He says, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and in sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, according, according among whom also we all had our conversation. Now, that's why I want everybody to understand. I don't care who you are. You did not deserve to be saved. You do not deserve for Jesus' blood to cleanse you from all righteousness because you were unfit. You, every one of us, every one of us were in a mess and it only took Jesus. Only Jesus is the only one that is able to cleanse us and to make us clean. Now, that ought, to, that, ought to, that ought to get the whole foundation. We all lived under the powers and influence of the principalities and powers of wickedness that was uh, engineered and uh, uh, conducted by the devil himself. But God was a, but God commanded his love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. My brothers and sisters, God is not a God of indifference and a God of hate, a God who has left us in the dark. I'm here to tell you, amen, that uh, he, has, he has caused us to be able to be a people that after his own heart, a people to whom he loves my brothers and sisters. Jesus. Jesus is that one. And uh, there is, he says in verse number 11, he says, in whom, amen, also ye are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands. Brothers and sisters, a false religion is a religion that declares that circumcision doesn't make any difference in your life. I got news for you. It makes, uh, uh, it makes a big difference. Some in the church at Colossae were stressing the ritual of circumcision of the Old Testament. They said that a man had to be circumcised in order to be saved, that God uh, would not accept a man unless he was circumcised. 
given his heart and life to Jesus Christ was not even a, an answer. But he wanted a man. The Jews felt that a man, only a man, had to be circumcised. Well, I got news for you. Circumcision had its place under the Old Testament, but it doesn't have its place in the New Testament. Amen, walls and electric lights. First, circumcision symbolizes the faith of a man and his family in God. Man, when a man trusted God, he was circumcised as a sign of, our testimony. As a testimony that he uh, believed and trusted in the Lord as his king. My brothers and sisters, it is imperative that man understand what circumcision uh, means. Secondly, circumcision are also symbolizes as a cutting away of the body of sins. When the foreskin was cut off and removed, it was a picture of sin. The whole body or a package of sin being cut off and removed from the man. Now, this is the picture of the Old Testament. Amen. This is the symbolization of the Old Testament uh, 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 circumcision. Uh, it was the cutting away of the foreskin of a male uh, uh, of Israel. Brothers and sisters, that's what God commanded of the, the Israelites. And if an Israelite failed to do it, God was on his case. Moses busied himself over uh, uh, the salvation of Israel. He forgot, amen, to circumcise his son. And God was on his way to kill him. <laughs> that's how serious it was. That's how serious circumcision in the Old Testament was. God was ready to kill Moses because he did not circumcise his son by the eighth day. God wasn't playing. His circumcision was imperative under the Old Testament. Now, uh, the, 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 the problem is that for us in the New Testament is that we have a circumcision not made with hands. Under the New Testament, there is a, a new means of circumcision. And it is a circumcision made, amen, made without hands. That's the circumcision the, of the New Testament. That's the New Testament uh, circumcision. And this circumcision is not just for men, women can also have this circumcision. My brothers and sisters, that's the good news. That's the good news of the New Testament uh, circumcision. It also is a symbol, amen, that you, uh, amen, have trusted and given your life over to Jesus and become a part of his family. You're, you are part of the circumcised 
family of Jesus Christ. Secondly, it is a symbol that you, uh, that your sins of your heart have been cut away from you. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm here to tell you that's some good, that's some good teaching. I'm glad. <laughs> Amen. The religion of the New Testament lets us know that undergoing circumcision in Christ is letting Christ cut away the body of sin out of your flesh. Think for a moment. What man uh, has the power to cut sin out of his own life? I just want somebody to answer that question that do not believe that circumcision of the New Testament is different from the, uh, from the uh, circumcision of the Old Testament. Where is the man that can take away sins? That's what the circumcision of Jesus has done in whom we, in whom also ye are circumcised, circumcised with the circumcision with made without hands in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Jesus Christ. Here's what he does. Here's how he does it. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation. <laughs> oh, the operation by the faith of the circumcision of the faith. Oh, do y'all get it? Do you get it this morning? Brothers and sisters, the, the baptism of Jesus is the baptism, is the circumcision made without hands. What does God do? Well, this circumcision, what God does with this circumcision, is he, when you are baptized into Christ Jesus, you, know, you are put to sleep in the death of baptism. When you take an operation today, one of the things they do is put you to sleep. They give you anesthesiology and you, they put you to sleep where you can't feel no pain. And when you are asleep and when you are, are your body is dead, they go in and they, they cut your body and they, amen. What Jesus does is he put us to sleep in baptism. We are buried with him in baptism in Romans chapter six. We are, verse three, we are buried. That is, we are put to sleep. We're in a dead sleep. And when we're down there, the master doctor, Jesus, the master surgeon, amen, he cuts away the sin of our hearts. He circumcises. And sisters, put y'all's ear a little closer. Guess what, sisters? You too are part of the circumcision of Christ. Under the old law, it was only for the males, but now it is for all of us. God doesn't make any difference. Salvation belongs to all of us. Brothers and sisters, that's what God is doing. That's what God has done for all mankind. He has done it for men and he's done it for men and women. 
And I'm coming to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that's the good news. That's the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, being buried with him in baptism, you also are risen with him through the faith. There ain't but one faith. And everybody's got to be in the same faith, the faith, the system of faith, the, the me, the faith of salvation, the one faith that God saves all of us alike. You know, there's one thing we got to be clear. God doesn't save you one way and save me another and save the, our neighbors another way. All of us have the same system of faith. He that believeth in Jesus shall be saved. And uh, in that, uh, he tells us, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that is baptized, he that is believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now, one of us believed the salvation that baptism saves us, and the other one doesn't. Now, I want to ask you, which one do you think God is going to save? Now, I just, now, let me be clear. Here's a man. I don't believe baptism saves nobody. Here's another man that believes what Jesus said. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now, I don't know about you. Now, you may be smarter than me, and I know it, because a whole bunch of y'all smarter than me. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to believe what Jesus said, and that's why I believed him, and I was baptized. Brother uh, Michael Caruso, we still got to preach it, don't we, brother? Amen. We got to preach it when they like it, and preach it when they don't like it. I don't know about you. Well, you say, well, I'm going to get baptized. I just don't believe it's saved. I believe I was saved before I got baptized. Well, that, okay. I mean, that's up to you. And, and Because I ain't going to argue with you. Because, see, I don't have no hell, and I ain't got no heaven. So if God wants to put all of the folk that don't believe that baptism saves them, he won't bring you in, that's up to him. But I'm going to do what God told me to do. And he told me, believe and be baptized for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to do that. That's what I'm going to do. So now, uh, I think we all better do it. If we want to go to heaven, that's what we need to do. God bless you. God bless you. That's enough for today. We're going to open up the prayer lines. We're going to open up the prayer lines. So. And if you would like to have prayer this morning, you give us a call. We'll pray with you. We'll pray for you. That our God may strengthen your life and the life of those around you. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I wonder today if you need prayer. You give us a call at 571-1240. We'll pray with you. Those of you that are on Facebook Live, you can write me a note and I'll lift up your prayer requests. Those of you on MCC Broadcasting, you can call us at 571-1240, 502-571-1240. We'll give prayer to you. We have several who have tagged us this morning, my dear bro preaching brother Michael Caruso there in um, 
there in uh, uh, Memphis, Tennessee, and um, Brother um, uh, Rick Howland uh, here, my radio host. Uh, um, we um, uh, uh, also uh, we have uh, Brother Luke Miles that has uh, tagged us, and we're so thankful for that and. Uh, we're thankful to all of you for being with us today. And may the God of heaven, if you need, if you need prayer, you give us a call. And we'll pray with you. Uh, we'll pray for you. And again, we want to uh, just remind you to continue to pray for Angelo Pendergraft. And pray for Brittany. Brittany needs our prayers. Brother Fleetwood has joined us. And um, um, we want to remind you that coming up tomorrow night, we'll be door knocking for Vacation Bible School. And uh, uh, Jasmine... I, I need all my all them niece, nieces and nephews of mine out there tomorrow night at six o'clock, so they can go knocking on doors in the neighborhood and passing out information. And tell Phaedra, and all of them, Felicia, and all of them, bring all of them out there tomorrow night, so they can go door knocking in the neighborhood. And all of you, get your sister Marilyn, get them grandbabies out there, amen. Get them on out there. And um, uh, Sister Carmen, you got a, you got a, a, a boatload. Uh, tell Sister Jaquay, get them all out there tomorrow night. Uh, and um, uh, we've got a lot of walking to do. Terry Parker, you want to walk? Come on out and walk with us tomorrow night. Amen. We'll be walking the neighborhood, telling people about Jesus. Praise be unto God. Our fifth annual Education Freedom Prayer Breakfast is coming up Tuesday, July the 10th from 8 to 9.30 from 8 to 9.30 in the morning. Uh, we want you to come and be with us. I see my dear brother Richard Rose. Brother, brother uh, Michael Caruso, brother Richard Rose, uh, called himself retired, uh, amen, has um, uh, joined with us, amen. Uh, brother Richard, uh, I, I I pray that you you're doing good. I've been looking at you, uh, Amen. Uh, on Facebook, yeah. Uh, praise be unto unto God. Uh, may and may He keep you as our continued prayer. Praise be unto God. Listen, bow with me. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God and Father, thank you so much. Thank you for the power of your love. The love that Jesus, that he gave to us. Lord, we pray for every one of us. For we all stand in need of prayer. We ask, O oh God, that you would be merciful. Be merciful to every person this morning. And help us to do all that you would have us to do. Lord, I pray. I pray for the church. I pray for Midwest. And I pray for the churches all over this land and country. May you bless them, O oh God. And I pray that we will all come into unity. And may, may you, O oh God, may you reign. May you reign in all of our lives. And that peace and harmony can come. Go with us today. Bless our vacation Bible school. Bless our... Uh, strengthening the family series this year. Oh, Lord, help us. Please help us, oh, God. I praise you 
In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Well, my time is up for today, and I've enjoyed uh, being with all of you, and I pray to God that you will continue to be with us, and uh, tomorrow at this same time, until then, know this, our God loves you, and so do I.